my life fades. The vision dims. All that remains are memories. I remember a time of chaos. Ruined dreams. This wasted land. But most of all, I remember the road warrior. The man we called Max. To understand who he was, you have to go back to another time. When the world was powered by the black fuel. And the desert sprouted great cities of pipe and steel. Gone now, swept away. For reasons long forgotten, two mighty warrior tribes went to war and touched off a blaze which engulfed them all. Without fuel, they were nothing. They'd built a house of straw. A thundering machine sputtered and stopped. Their leaders talked and talked and talked. But nothing could stem the avalanche. Their world crumbled. The cities exploded. A whirlwind of looting. A firestorm of fear. Men began to feed on men. On the roads, it was a white line nightmare. Only those mobile enough to scavenge, brutal enough to pillage, would survive. The gangs took over the highways, ready to wage war for a tank of juice. And in this maelstrom of decay, ordinary men were battered and smashed. Men like Max, the warrior Max. In the roar of an engine, he lost everything. became a shell of a man, a burnt out, desolate man, a man haunted by the demons of his past, a man who wandered out into the wasteland, and it was here, in this blighted place, that he learned to live again. Road Warriors on this episode of Destructamundo. It's on, it's on. There's no sound. Play with the rabbit ears. Parts incredible as they seem are not the results of mass hysteria. Mass hysteria. Now they think we're imagining all this. Destructamundo. Witnesses to the effect of people who acted as though they were in a kind of trance were killing and eating their victims, prompted authorities to examine the bodies of some of the victims. Medical authorities in Cumberland have concluded that in all cases, the killers are eating the flesh. Repeating this latest bulletin just this morning, Welcome to the official first episode of Destructamundo podcast, where tonight we've uh, tossed it up after having a couple beers <laughs> that we were going to discuss the uh, the uh, Mad Max scenario of the end of the world, where essentially uh, we're all seeing it out there now, where the gas prices are going through the roof. And, the juice. <laughs> yes, the juice. The precious juice. <laughs> where... Uh, we all start killing each other for fuel. So start. Yeah. Well. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's really going on now, isn't it? I mean, we're uh, we're in the midst of it, the beginnings, if it were. So we really need to kind of get on the ball with this and start uh, thinking about where we need to be. Where 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 do we need to be now for this? What what do we need to have? What what it's what's our uh, what's our supply list for this? Uh, gasoline-less future. Yeah, and I want to know <clears throat> if a hybrid vehicle is really going to be of any use, because I don't know. 
you know, that's always got me too because I know you have to fill the tank on it and it's recharging the batteries. And a totally electric vehicle has to be plugged into a wall like a you know any other rechargeable battery does. And you can't go just, I mean, they're still dependent on oil. I mean, yeah. as much as coal is a big part of electricity, um, <clears throat> still, I mean, oil, it's the oil that gets the coal to the electric plant to burn coal. And there's hardly any coal-burning electric plants still in operation as far as I know. No, but well, most of them are. Are they? Yeah. The, uh, the the big one we have in town the uh, is is, it is all coal burning? fired. I thought that that was out of, uh, totally most, outdated. Yeah, like mo- that, that wasn't being done. No, anymore. most electricity yeah. is still coal fired. <laughs> well, hydroelectric doesn't make up enough of a big, you know. At, at any rate, but battery charging yeah, is still dependent on electricity. Well, hybrid vehicles, obviously. I mean, you do get great gas mileage, but the actual battery cells have a limited lifetime. Course, and, like and that's any other yeah, and that's a lot of the criticisms of hybrid vehicles is that there's this perception that you're saving all this money, but if every perhaps three to four years, as numbers that I've heard, if you have to replace this battery cell in there, and they don't tell you what that's going to cost when you buy the car, right? No. You know, or how often you know you may need to replace it and how much it's going to cost, so you may not actually be saving a tremendous amount of money. Yeah. But and you don't get like speed, which I guess from the whole Mad Max thing. And that's another thing. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of computers in cars, especially in a hybrid vehicle where you have battery mods, you know, to where you have to monitor the battery's consumption and you have to know, you know, <laughs> you just a lot of computers in cars in general and uh and the traditional Mad Max scenario was preceded by a nuclear war, or at least it was it caused a nuclear war. And so then you had the well, you know, the in the yeah the prologue to the Road Warrior that sort of sets up what happened post Mad Max. There is the perception that I always got that there was some sort of at least a limited exchange. You get that, right. you know. There's the the, but, the explosion. But will that actually occur in today's day? I, I mean, would I would imagine not. No, I, mean, I, th- it, I think we've reached a point where any significant nuclear exchange is highly unlikely. I mean, a localized EMP is uh, still a possibility, just because somebody could get a briefcase bomb, set it off in Washington mm. or New York, and then but the whole yeah, it's I put mean, the whole I, East Coast out of business for I don't, a while. But I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's much of a chance of like a. You know, a full-on exchange. Yeah, quote sure. uh, quote unquote nuclear war, but and there's still a lot of debate as to the actual effects of EMPs. I mean, some people say like you know, one nuke is going to crash the eastern seaboard, and then some people suggest that the problem is very much overstated. So, but it's certainly likely that if there's any sort of a nuclear explosion, and some things are more sensitive than others. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, the whole, like, um, UUNet and all of the infrastructure for the Internet is on the East Coast, basically in northern Virginia, the area right there where I used to live. And uh, I used to see it every day. I mean, you talk about, like, the axis of evil. When I would go to work, I would pass the Oracle building right across the street from the Microsoft building, right <laughs> down the street from SIG Arms, you know. Yeah. So there was, here was this, you know, the computer they, they've, infrastructure they've moved now, next but, to the yeah, weapons were... infrastructure and Northrop Grumman and all the other big businesses yeah. that make their home in Northern Virginia to be able to make their money off the government. That's just how it works. But if that place gets cooked, I mean, the West Coast is still there, but the West Coast doesn't really harbor the the pipeline doesn't really have like the doesn't have the infrastructure to run the internet. I mean, that's all UUNet, and that's all in Northern Virginia. That's that whole yeah. area right there. So, I mean, but that's a different subject entirely. But <clears throat> if I mean gas prices right now, I was looking at the other day, and a dollar ninety seven was there, and, and you know what? I thought that was cheap. Uh, yeah. and, and it struck me that, that man. I mean, a, a year ago, I wouldn't have thought so. I'd have been like, oh, my God, what the hell's happening? Well, but, just think of, of not many years, just a few years ago, it, it was 97 cents. Yeah, and mm-hmm. over a dollar yes. was considered ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. It, Christmas time, I remember uh, it was a dollar twenty-five the year before last. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, the stuff's going to, the prices are going to rise. There's nothing really you can, any of us can do about that. But what are we looking at? I mean, 
when do I go get the shotgun and what? start like sort of hijacking? You don't have one. Sure. Yeah. Uh, well. Yeah. 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 When do, when, well. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 outing you're me looking on the at, air, uh, man. <laughs> that it's, I, um, I'm weaponless. It's a question of 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 resources, and obviously, a great many whatever you want to call them, disasters or calamities. You know, you're going to have events because it's supply and demand. You're going to have a limited amount of resources. And as the demand, you know, the demand is not staying at the same level. No, no. Nor is the supply staying at the no. same level. In general, demand is increasing and supply is decreasing. Incoming. That sounds like artillery. Yeah, we have artillery sounds outside our door right now, and here we are talking about this. I'm we're thinking the, maybe we're the, caught unawares. The wrong end of a mortar barrage. At, at any rate, I wish you could hear this. Um, I hate mortar fire. It's so impersonal. Sure. <laughs> um, it's a very long-distance <laughs> weapon. Yeah. But, I mean, you, you know, so, so you're going to have a question of, um, you know, there's more people, more cars, more demand for yeah. gasoline prices are just going to go up and there's you know there's plenty of oil out there um it's a totally uh, artificially manipulated market by OPEC oh absolutely um, but to, how to, far to maintain their profit how margins. far will they go i mean cuz you're talking about basically countries that are reining back a theocracy that would love to see this happen would love to see the first world crumble to its knees because they're not worried about... I mean, everybody's out to power. But um, you, you still... I mean, the Saudis are keeping, like, the... You know, they're letting, like, people in their country basically tell their citizenry that they have to behave a certain way according to the Koran. <clears throat> and not to say that that's... Uh, that's the wrong way to go about things. I mean, they do have some very strict rules. And I mean, they're they're letting their their mullahs and the people who are in charge of their the religious social hierarchy over there basically run things as long as they don't interfere with the capitalism that they have, the the system that they have of controlling the rest of the world with the oil. And I mean, one of these days, if they pull, you know, if they get, I mean, if we as a country don't change our ways with our way of dealing with foreign policy, we're going to piss off enough people to where somebody over there, and, and I mean, the Saudis were heavily involved with 9-11, so, I mean, it wouldn't take push come to shove for them to basically decide to overthrow the government in Saudi Arabia, cut off all the oil for everybody, start a giant war, and then we end up in an even worse situation. I don't know. I mean, it's just, it, it seems like a possibility to me, and it, I don't know. I, I don't know what our figureheads in government have thought about it, but you know, I'm sure there's people thinking about this right now, getting paid pretty good to do it too. Yeah. So I, I guess what what we are really discussing here is is there an actual possibility of the road warrior type of a possibility? Sure. I think yeah. We. we but not. We, uh, I'd, I'd say yes. Oh, okay, so if, well, if circumstances, no, but it wouldn't well, be it well, wouldn't be a nuclear war. Yeah, I, I think yeah, I on. think it's it's there were certain there are certain aspects of it that are that are almost inevitable, contingent upon some other, you know, <clears throat> if you survive any sort of uh, huge disaster, you know, collapse of civilization, whether it's a natural disaster, epidemic, whatever you know, a- asteroid from space, something, yes. you know, the survivors of that are going to run into something, I think, very similar to that. Yes. You know, you're going to have, uh, uh, especially then, because the the petroleum industry is going to be gone. You know, there's obviously, there's there's huge amounts of gasoline in reserve in places. Um, I don't know where they are. I wish I did, but... Um, you know, there's gasoline around. I'm I, sure. I do know where there's some gasoline actually um, here in here in town. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not talking though; it's um, mine. You know, but I mean, you know, obviously there, there's reserves of it. It's not like they make it last week and then I get it this week. You know, the stuff's around. Sure, sure, it's it's for and a while. And then, um, and it's not terrifically difficult to make a gasoline that cars will run on. Obviously, it's not going to be 
as clean as no if you if you actually actively lower the compression ratio of your car um, get it down to a, a reasonable level like around eight to one um, I know we're going to get some email from somebody who's going to say I'm incorrect on this but if you do get a if you get an engine's compression down to a certain level which means that you basically have to up the uh, CFMs of the carburation unit or fuel injectors you have to just make sure it pumps more of it you can actually run on something approaching 70 octane fuel yeah I mean it just it really depends because a higher compression car is going to need better fuel because of the way it runs it's, it's getting more yeah. out of its energy but it's yeah. just you can do it. it it would be very difficult on modern cars because you'd have to mess with the computer but I mean there's plenty of people out there that can yeah. That's the thing. I mean, you can mess around with the fuel injector flow with a laptop if you have the right connectors yeah. to do it. So, so, so without that, the the recommendation would be to get an older, yeah, which is yeah, which is where you wind up with the road warrior. Yeah, right? exactly. And it makes sense. But I mean, modern cars are 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 they're ill suited for that kind of work also because they're not made of the same kind of materials that older cars were made out of. Also, muscle cars were made out of some pretty rough stuff back in the seventies. Yeah. But, I mean, you look at the modern cars, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of computers and there's some, a lot of complicated stuff, but they're fairly low maintenance. Yeah, mm-hmm. the stuff will run if the computer yeah. goes out. It just won't you know? run well. And, yeah, and there's a lot of, and as it gets worn out, it gets beat up, you can't maintain it. Well, that's not ex- actually so. It, on a electronic fuel injection car, you do have to have that computer to run that. Because if you don't have that flowing, it, the timing... Yeah. Is set to well, I mean, computer, there's, there's, so. there's, you know, there, there are some things that will, some things that won't. But I yeah. mean, but I mean, modern cars are are fairly sturdy, fairly low maintenance. But I think we've established um, traditionally that the scenario would provide a necessity to own like a low maintenance, older style car that you could work on yourself. Yeah. Because obviously, you're not just going to be able to pull in any place and get it <coughs> yeah, hair. Yeah. You're going to need to have so, something. I mean, that's, you can yeah, fix. that's that's the where everyone envisions the the sort of. And you need to be really fast. And, and kind of loud and mean too, you know. It, I mean, if anything, the road warrior. Or what about motorcycles? Because that's also, well, a, also a huge part yes, of it. Yes, absolutely. I mean, K KZ one thousand can't beat that bike. Yeah, with a stick. the motorcycle. It's you know, provided you're. You get great gas mileage with them. Yeah, too. Little they're fuel they're and a lot unbelievably easy to work on. Um, but little protection. Yeah. Although the speed but, is unmatched. But I by think most I cars. think as long as you're like an in, as long as you're an individual. You know, obviously, for for you know a family or whatever, it's impractical. But if you've got individuals, and then obviously they band together, and you have, you know, groups of them on motorcycles, it, it's you know in yeah. it's that sort of nomadic existence. The uh, quote unquote biker gang. Yeah, scoot jockeys. Yeah. Um, Nomad trash. So, you know, and that makes sense because they're going to be living largely nomadically. Raiding for supplies and fuel, raping mm-hmm. and pillaging across the wasteland. I mean that 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 makes perfect sense to me. I mean, but if you were a loner, you really kind of need a car. I mean, because if you're carrying all your supplies, if with you're carrying you, your stuff with you, yeah, and you're you know, on the hunt for fuel, yeah, and you're carrying all your extra fuel with you, which is another thing too. A lot of people don't consider this, but it's actually less economically feasible for you to drive your car with a full tank than it is for you to drive with a half tank. Because right. you're hauling around more weight, more weight, which means that you're burning more fuel. So that's why when they do, you know, poles for races, they run them yeah. at the least amount of fuel possible. But if, if you know, I'm not in like in the Road Warrior as opposed to Mad Max, he's re- he's removed the the rear deck lid, and mm-hmm. there's a reserve fuel tank installed into the trunk compartment basically. Yeah, obviously you're going to need to carry around yeah. excess fuel over the amount that you would need to normally yeah. drive because you never know when you're going to end up with so, more gas. You can't just say, well, and, yeah, and uh, the and the, the worst, the, you know, one of the worst things you would 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 want to do is like to find a bunch of gas and then not have any way, you know. Oh, sure. Have to fill up your car and then go shit. You know, there's a lot more gas here. And it's too bad I can't <coughs> take it, you know. Or fill it in a bunch of drums and throw it in the back seat or something, yeah. you know. But um, but that's not going to be that's not a really quick and easy thing to do. Would be to in- install like a giant reserve fuel tank in the trunk of your car. No, no. I mean, you can with fairly low effort put a fuel cell in your car. Yeah, fuel and, cells are easy, but he's got that massive tank. And I mean, you can you can um, end up with like a big. Uh, I mean, if you really wanted to, you could hook a cooler up to a fuel line. 
you know, if you had. I think I think you'd probably be better served, you know, with um. Oh, I think you'd be better served by having. Sorry, folks, we had an um, interruption of sorts. Um, I guess it's a trade-off because I would say you, you might be better served with having, um, you know, like like basically gas cans. Obviously, you know. Oh some, yeah, I mean you definitely. But then have some gas you know, cans. but then that way you know you're going to have to stop and fuel up, and that mm-hmm. may not always be convenient. I mean, he's got he's got a pretty good setup because it's it's set up like an actual reserve tank. You know, it's going to drain the main tank, and then the reserve kicks in, presumably. Yeah. Presumably, that's how he's got it hooked up. But but at any rate, you need you to know. be able to carry around all your excess fuel no matter which yeah, way you decide yeah. to go about it. So that yeah. that's one on the <coughs> list is that you and if, and do if, have and if room you're for all fuel. by if you're moving all by yourself, a car might be might be a better th- you know better thing than you can carry a lot more with you, yeah. and then you have the opportunity to carry more weaponry too. But if you, I mean, you don't I don't know. If, it if to you're your a, back. if you're a, you know, if you're a stripped down, you know, high speed mobile guy, and you just you and your bike and a bedroll and a, you know, a handgun or something and a you know a rifle, right? You, you got well, on a on. bike, you you. You'd, you'd have to be more of a hit and run yeah. type of individual. And I mean, if you I, had a car, I mean, you could carry all kinds of yeah, but know, obviously a car you're going to be lumbering and that, along. That, that yeah. comes the problem of how are you getting your fuel? I mean, we've been talking yeah. about having the fuel, but getting the fuel yeah. is another thing. I mean, you're going to be defending yourself, and you're also going to be aggressively trying to you get know. fuel, and that means that and a car you know, is like you might you have know. to take somebody out. And uh, I don't know, man. From watching chips, I learned that the only way they ever caught anybody on chips was to make them wreck. Yeah. I mean, Plus, the, I mean they I've, couldn't do anything. I've, I've long maintained, I mean, I, I've, you know, I've, I've been on a motorcycle. And one of the first things you realize when you ride a motorcycle is you wonder why in movies is anyone in a car ever frightened of anyone in a motorcycle? Sure. I mean, it's so easy to like, take I a could, guy out on a I bike. Could be, I could be in a Chevette, and there could be 500 guys on motorcycles trying, <laughs> you to, trying, to, kill, right through them, sure. trying to kill me, and none of them could do anything. No. You know, you don't have, it doesn't take anything. You, I mean... Anybody in a car can very easily kill anyone on any motorcycle if they yeah. want to. But as I say, you know, a car has a lot of uh, advantages. But I say, you, not only can you carry more fuel, but obviously you're going to need a lot more. A car is going to require a lot more fuel. Yes. Mm-hmm. You know, so you're going to have to be hunting for more. But I mean, if you had a, you know, a decent sized motorcycle, and you hook up something like. Um, the equivalent of like paneers, hard bag, you know, hard shell bags on it. Yeah, you'd be able to call. Yeah, you, you could, know, I and, mean, you, and you, really you could, could and you could store fuel in those in some containers inside them. You know, you could probably fit several, you know, uh, containers of fuel in those. You know, that's really going to. But extend. that takes away from a lot of what you may need to carry in order to be able to get the fuel in the first place. I mean, you you, well, you, could, you could carry it a lot on your back. You're not walking around, yeah. so you no, could pack that. I mean, you look at you look at, and you you look at guys. Ammo. I mean, you look at guys that. I mean, you guys that food. go like tour the world on big bikes. You know, they got a lot of gear on there, man. And you know, you're not going to have all that kind of stuff. You're sure. going to be stripping it down much more. You know. I don't know. I mean, it's it's like I said, it's a trade-off. I mean, a car you got all this extra stuff, but you're and you can carry more fuel, but you're going to need more fuel. Yeah. So a you're going to have to be a lot more aggressive yeah, about it. Yeah. A bike you can't carry as much stuff, and you can't carry as much fuel, but you're not using as much. Fuel. But not all of us are the goose, man. We can't all ride around, you know, knowing what we're doing. I mean, if the shit comes down, I mean. I don't know about you, but I, I'm not too worried about these 45-year-old Harley guys. Cause, no, I mean, no, uh, they're the... I mean, the khakis just don't frighten <coughs> no. me at all. No, I mean, between those... jackets aside, the fringe just what sets between, it off. Uh, yeah, between... They'd be too worried about messing their bike up. I think, yeah, i get a good laugh yeah, out it, of it the, before the, I the... knocked them off the road. In between, my those and the, between those <laughs> and, the, and, the, and, the, and the meatheads on all the, the sport bikes. Sure. The guys in, like, the... Tank tops, sure. I, tank there, tops, shorts. Yeah, there's nothing, no nothing better than riding, a, riding, a, riding a sport bike in a tank top. Yeah. So. <laughs> and if you and, and if you know anything about sport bikes, riding a sport bike for long distance, somebody's going to be like, "Oh, you could do this. I know you could." But I've ridden a sport bike, and you go for about a couple of miles on it, and you want to stop and stretch every chance you get because it hurts. It really so. does. You see the guys that race those things, and they get off their bike, and they look like they're in pain. Because they just screw up your lower back, 
And if you're driving long distances on one of those, I mean, as fast as they're going to be able to do. No, it's not. It's not the bike for that sort of situation. No, no. And then no. there really isn't anything else out there. I mean, in the days where Mad Max was filmed, which is you know, obviously it's going to be the the Bible for what we're talking about here. So we're going to come back to that, obviously. But like sure. it, during that period, I mean, there were some sport bikes, but they weren't quite the same thing as what we have now. And the companies that are making motorcycles are are catering to two different groups. Essentially, there are different. There are better companies out there that are starting to go with the more street fighter type bike, like Triumph's doing it, yeah. Suzuki's doing it, and a lot of companies are coming out with upright bikes that are built like sport bikes. They have a lot of power underneath them, but they don't necessarily make you sit like you're in a race, which is horrid. Um, but there, there were for a long time, sport bikes and cruisers, and the cruiser bike doesn't have the maneuverability of the sport bike nor the speed. And it's, not, it, but it does have a lot more luggage capability, obviously. Well, so. yeah, I think your your best bet in that case, the easiest thing probably to come across would be like a touring bike. Yes. And a touring bike's going to have the space, and it's probably going to have you know hard case, you know hard bags on it, stuff like that. You know, probably your best bet is going to be like the so-called dual sports. You know, the yes. BMW, like a the GS is a yes. six fifty or. A, the 11, well, it's now a 12. The 1150GS is now, it's Well, a any of the that's BMW a, Dakar series, anything that's in that range um, of bikes where you can go off-road if you have to, and I mean... And actually, what is considered by a lot of people to be even better is the, the Kawasaki equivalent, the KLR650 yeah, from Kawasaki, yeah. which is similar to BMW's F650GS Dakar. It's mm-hmm. similar, you know, it's actually, and Suzuki has one now, too. And if you similar. want to go full off-road, you can yeah. go KDM, and but, KDMs are just... Um, oh, yeah, Suzuki that. Suzuki has a 650 dual sport. They're all very similar. They're all 650 singles, truckloads of torque. Just, oh, absolutely, just singles. Great. Yeah, and those are like the, the adven- I'm talking about the adventure touring bikes, the guys that go around the world. And, and BMW makes the big monster version of it. Yeah, which is a trade off because it's a lot more power. But if you're on rough terrain and you're dumping that thing every now and then, picking that son of a bitch up. Oh, he's oh, going to get old real quick. So the Harley Davidson for me um, would just be the worst bike imaginable oh, yeah, to have because yeah. you would be you'd be limited in where you could actually ride. Yeah. Uh, the breakdown characteristics of the Harley Davidson yeah. are awful. I mean, they're just they're always in the shop, always. And I mean, I don't want a bike that I can't trust, and I certainly don't want one that I can't steer. So I, yeah. I would definitely think a dual sport or a full-on enduro off-road bike with maybe some street tires would be the way to go because you could you could go off-road if you knew that you would be going off-road more, then you could do that. You could put like knobbies on it and ride off-road all the time. Just yeah. get yourself out someplace, but then you're going to be limited to where you'd be able to go. And yeah, it's there's, be rougher on there's a popular. There, it's a popular sort of idea. These people when they discuss, you know, these, these apocalyptic scenarios and as the, <coughs> when they term bugging out and all this stuff, you know, like, I'm going to get out of the city and I'm, you know, I'm going to get away from all the, the crazy shit. And, and they always perceive like they need a, they need a, a Jeep or an SUV with all wheel drive and they need all this stuff. And I'm yeah. like, where exactly are you going? Are you going to drive, <laughs> are you going to drive your Cherokee up into the woods somewhere? <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know, and there may be times when you may need to cross a field or something. Yeah. But you can do that in any car unless it's muddy or, or right. you're driving like a Well, idiot. I think in a situation like this, the last thing you need to worry about is getting stuck in the mud. Yeah. But yeah, there's, there's you, always, you there, definitely want to not get stuck. There's, but there's, yeah, yeah, but it's know, not on the, it's not going to be on my priority. But, but, but I, I'm, I'm not, and I said there, there's always, there may be moments, you know, when you'd be happy to have that sort of thing. But I don't understand this perception like they're going to be driving <coughs> off road i mean there's i can't even imagine how many millions of miles of paved roads there are in this country oh yeah uh, pretty much anywhere where you'd want to drive there's, there's a, a road, road to be there so or it'll get you damn close yeah yeah even it'll if get it's you within walking distance yeah a there's there's travel something road. i'm like this off road thing i'm like where exactly are you going to drive up to like the top of the rockies 
on the side of the mountain. Yeah. There are roads that go up there. Yeah, you, know? you can and look like, at a state like Wyoming, and you can have one person for every 100 square miles. And yeah. you could live on <laughs> paved <laughs> paved roads and never see a soul probably the whole time you're so, out there. So, yeah, I mean, the the I, I think largely, the at least for me, in my way of thinking, this uh, the necessity for any sort of uh, off-road travel, it seems largely overstated to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It just seems like the sort of thing that would happen so rarely. You know, and those vehicles are not terrifically efficient for just lots and lots of driving. You know? Oh no, absolutely not. Most um, vehicles that are four-wheel drive use so much fuel, yeah, anyways, yeah. that they're just. They're, so you see, you see a lot of these. If you're not a support vehicle for a group of people <laughs> actively going out and getting you fuel, and you're not yeah. vitally important to the group because you are able to store a lot of stuff, then I don't see why anybody would be wanting you to drive your big honking SUV. You know. Yeah, gas guzzling ass <laughs> around. I just don't see it. So, uh, and, I don't see and, anybody owning anything except for maybe old jeeps. You know, old well, two seater. I, 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 I've, I, I've, I've encountered you know discussions online and stuff, and these people that have this sort of uh, you know bugging out when the apocalypse hits type of mentality. And there's so many of them that have some, have some sort of you know an SUV jeep or or a full size pickup truck, right. and they and they've got all this. Or their dream vehicle is a track vehicle. Yeah, yeah, yeah that type yeah, of thing. Something you know. that def, def, desperately be, needs yeah. like a, a supply chain. Yes, you know. Or you they, know, guys driving deuce and a half with yeah. full and of gasoline to you so you can do it. Not yeah. to change the subject, but these are also the people who are like, I don't want to have to carry ammo with me, so I'm going to carry reloading equipment and reload ammo on the ro- you know on the <laughs> way. Like, well, yeah, there's how just, much freaking powder you carrying around yeah. and where's all this brass coming yeah, from I mean, and yeah. where are the bullets coming from danger to everyone okay. around you Dude, if you carry if you have to, powder there's but, plenty of walmarts to raid yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's but there's this you know there's perception of the, this large vehicle mm. like it's some sort of full size truck or a full size SUV you know and they they've got like this big uh, you know cattle guard grill on the front mm-hmm. and <clears throat> and all the lights and all this stuff and I'm like you I don't understand why you're going to be driving off road and they've got all this, st- and I'm like, if you're, if this is your vehicle, and you've got everything, presumably everything that you think you're going to need to survive the apocalypse, in there with you, all your guns, all your food and water and whatever, you know, you're not going to be crashing through roadblocks with it either. No. At least I wouldn't be. I mean, because you're, you're so reliant upon this vehicle, you're bugging out, you're fleeing the city, you're leaving all this stuff behind. Driving into the wasteland. You know, and like, <laughs> why would you? You're living. I don't know why you're going to be driving cross country. Like I said, there's so many roads to get you anywhere, and I, you're not going to like be driving through stuff. Well, presumably if, you'd you want know, to stay away from like mass populated areas simply because if everybody's at each other's throats, you just want to stay away from. Yeah, all those the idea. People. The idea is just, you know, the cities are going to be the worst place to be because yeah. there's so many people, and generally when you get a lot of people together. Crazy stuff happens. Oh, oh yeah, violence and <laughs> so, overnight. You so if there's if there's if you have the catalyst out. of some sort of <clears throat> catastrophic event going on, you know, uh, of something like that, you know, if things get crazy. You just I'm going to get out of the city, man. You know. So so we've we pretty much decided if you're you're making your way into the hinterlands, as it were, and and you're doing so in either a car that you can maintain yourself or a motorcycle that would be able to have, you know, off-road capabilities perhaps, but more or less to have the ability to carry some baggage and would be friendly to bad road conditions, you know. Yeah, most I think bikes are, you want yeah, you want a yeah, you want a bike that's comfortable to ride for a long period of time. Yes, absolutely. And you can carry a fair amount of gear on. It's pretty fairly mechanically simple, you know, something like that. Yes. Something that you were, you know, because you do need to have an intimate relationship with your with your vehicle. And, I, and I'm still of the mindset that if you own a motorcycle and don't know how to repair it, you shouldn't own a motorcycle. Because there's there, the engine's open to you. You don't have to even pop a hood so much. It's to just look down and there it is. And if you don't know how to change your own oil... <laughs> or the guys that take it even to the dealership take a to get spark the... plug out. I mean that that can be difficult for some people because they have a hard time getting the wrench in there to do it. Now I've seen bikes that are hard to do that on. Yeah, but the, the guys. Regardless, that... you should know how to do all the little things to your bike to keep it running. And I think the guys that don't, I have no respect for whatsoever. The guy that like he takes his bike to the dealership to get the oil changed. Yeah, and his wife 
shows up in the car to pick him up. He yeah. has to drop off the bike to get the oil changed I mean, and then well, ring him back later th- when it's, it's done. It's the Harley Davidson mentality of motorcycles. Yes. So the, the rebellion that you never got to be a part of because you were too it's, busy, um, you know, avoiding war whoa. by going to college. I'm not saying anything about guys out there, but hey, you know, if you were if you bought a bike in the last five years and you're over the age of 40, uh, chances are you bought it in order to li- relive or live for the first time some kind of rebellious youth. So you're you're doing your midlife crisis, right? <laughs> and uh, and I'm sorry, but that doesn't make you you know. It makes you a guy who owns well, a bike. Well, no, I mean that's but, uh, yeah, exactly, <laughs> and that's not necessarily a bad thing. No, but if you think people are supposed to be impressed by it, then, oh, absolutely, then you're a fucking tool. Y- yes, yes. <laughs> that's the point. You know, it's like. I don't care if you go buy whatever you want. Oh, you know? yeah. But if you pull up next to me and, and gun the throttle and look over at me, I'm going to laugh at you. Yeah. I'm not going <laughs> to go. I have, have, have done I'm so. No, yeah. And, I'm go, and, and if, if, if I'm feeling really frisky, I'm probably going to point at you and laugh. <laughs> you know? And it's like, so, but uh, that's, a, yeah, that's whatever. I don't think we have to worry about those guys. Well, a lot of, like... Because uh, those guys are not going to survive whatever happens. Yes, exactly. They're going to be too worried about, like, the collapse of civilization. They'll be out buying bread and milk. Considering their yes. bike is a viable form of transportation, they're like, this is how I get to the bar. They're gonna, this is they're, how I impress chicks. They're going to be... This isn't they're gonna be too busy. transportation. They're going to be standing there deciding which pair of relaxed fit jeans to put on, <laughs> and should I or should I not put my chaps on over them. Exactly. Do I need my chaps? Well, you know, leather pants do hold up a hell of a lot uh, better than than jeans do nowadays. Anyways, I mean, you really gotta hunt out there for some denim that will hold up. I think the first thing you ought to do is go get you a pair of like uh, How leathers un- are unwashed Levi's, you yeah, know, and yeah. wear those but, suckers in. I mean, I yeah, just I mean, for the sort of prolonged wear that you're just that you know that you'd be encountering in this sort of situation. I just can't stomach Le- the idea of wearing <coughs> leather pants. No, I mean leathers. Leathers are great, you know, for motorcycle. Oh, absolutely. For, for, you know, but yeah, for the sort of prolonged riding and and wear, I, I, leathers would would be those things are. Well, I mean, <laughs> yeah. realistically, you're, you're, barring any kind of nuclear yeah. destruction of everything on the face of the planet, you're going to be able to find clothes. Yeah, yeah. So, so just stick with if so. you're out in the. Yeah, if you're out yeah. in hot weather, stick with cotton. Unless, yeah. of course, you're in the Matrix, which apparently they had, like, the greatest technology. They had, like, flying spaceships that would, could go through the sewers, and they had, yeah. you know, like, mechanized robots that shot, yeah, but they you know, had 50 crappy calibers. Clothes. But they, they were wearing, like, the worst like long clothing under- <laughs> that I had ever seen. Like long underwear, like, like long john blind, shirts with a neck cut out. There was some blind grandmother that was out there... Making all the clothes for everybody. Yeah, yeah. There's like, uh, yeah, but <laughs> yeah. But at any rate, you should. Yes, you should have clothes that are durable, that are wearable yeah. year round. You shouldn't have to go well. Well, that, that's this, this is this is this is another good point. Um, another sort of popular perception of this, you know, post-apocalyptic thing is you see all the guys like they're they've 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 you know put together their outfits and it's all the surplus stuff. Mixed with the the low grade tack vest and 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 webbing and and and, and the high grade lightweight civilian stuff that's and, like uh, a little bit more than the armies able well, to afford. Well, no, I mean the guys, the guys, you know, they'll have like they're like this is my, you know, and and some guys it'll be camo, but it's usually the black stuff because they're all closet spec ops tack ninja sure, dudes. Sure, you know, and it's it's revenge. It's just it's revenge of the air softers, and it's. <laughs> And they're all, you know, they've got like, I've got my black fatigue. Oh, we take on those guys too much. They deserve it. Um, (laughs) But, you know, they've got like the the black fatigues and the the faux SWAT boots and, you know. Well, at least they're out of, at least they abandoned the urban camo. Well, true. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Like there's very few of those out there now. But but what I'm saying. There's the the hip hop camo, though, which is like (laughs) totally different things. Um, But the point I want to make is that these guys, you know, they've got all this surplus stuff stuff or you know some of it's not even surplus but it's military style clothing and and they basically they've got this sort of SWAT look to them yeah it's usually you know it's the black fatigues or even if it is yeah, surplus there's nothing wrong with no, cargo no, pants listen listen it's just the point i want to make is like that that surplus stuff is is in a lot of senses really good it's 
It's cheap. Most military stuff, most, I will yeah. specify, is pretty <coughs> good, functional, durable stuff. You know, it's, it's, and for the money, it's a lot cheaper than going to like a sporting goods store and buying like the, you know, outdoor active camping type clothing, which is a lot more expensive, oh, oh, you know. Yeah. So I'm not, I don't have anything against the surplus, but these guys envision themselves in this outfit with like the ammo pouches and the bandolier of shotgun shells and all this stuff, you know, and I'm like, I'm, I'm going to, you know, I got my 357 on this hip and my 45 here and I got my shotgun over my shoulder and I got my AK here and I've got <coughs> 14 mags for this and 12 for this and I got 60 shotgun shells and all this stuff and First of all, you're going to need more things than guns and ammo. They yeah. never, like, envision, like, where do you carry all your other stuff? Yeah, I wonder like, if they ever food. actually put all that on yeah, and like, find yeah. out how put this, put this on and go run yeah. two miles, yeah. and then if you're still alive, call me. Sure. But one thing that I've always thought is is a problem with this sort of thing is that whether it's, you know, the the when, when, they, when they're suiting up to, to you know, to, to, to face the end of civilization as we know it. whether it's you know the the zombie apocalypse or whatever and they're going out to 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 lay waste or or if it's you know the but i mean at least in the early stages obviously if if the world has completely gone to hell and there's absolute chaos you can do whatever the hell you want nothing matters you yeah. know i can you know i can wear a total gr- chaos you can I, do, yeah you, know, you can wear like but, a, a i can Hawaiian wear shirt. i can wear a gorilla suit and a top hat <laughs> yeah, yeah. you know and no, but but the the point I want to make is like in the in the early stages when when there is trouble and some people are bugging out and some people are barricading themselves in their homes and these guys envision themselves you know doing this stuff you're not gonna at this point you're still gonna have law and order and mm-hmm. whether it's police or military you know local regional federal whatever MFP you know, there there are gonna be people trying to maintain law and order because that's what they do law and order civilization oh oh absolutely but, but the point i want to make is that is that bands or even small groups or bands of civilians dressed in military style clothing carrying multiple weapons you know what are the quote unquote assault i hate that term but you know that type of thing roaming the countryside is not really going to go over to well. no no because folks we have a there's a fine line to be drawn here we, we can <clears> either know? have the mad Max scenario or we can have god forbid the postman scenario well, yeah <laughs> but but uh, i mean this this sort of this is this is something i think that uh, that applies to just you know to, to anything but i mean like in that early stages these guys have like this outfit that they envision putting on so you get like you and four of your buddies you know in your suv and you're all in like black fatigues <laughs> Yeah. With all your tack gear on, yeah. you know, and you've got, and you've all got multiple handguns, and this guy's got his, you know, uh, his semi-auto AK, and this guy's got an AR, and there's, he's the shotgunner on the team, yeah. you know, and that's all that. And stand. I'm going to look at that group of people and say, there's all my ammo. Yeah. Just and, go straight you know, Sure. You that, just that, shoot out that a tire, sort of wait thing. for one of them to go have to change it, and <laughs> yeah. then blow up the van with a grenade. But, uh, but yeah. I'm, you know, my, my point is that, like, that sort of thing in the early stages of whatever sort of catastrophic event we're talking about, that's really not going to go over too well, because there are going to be law enforcement people. No, they're not going to want to see a, a rival law enforcement yeah, those, groups those, you know, out there's, there and there's thinking a, that you're, There's like, going to be police, Making you know, your own laws. And whatever it's, you know, there's going to be police, there's going to be federal stuff, there's going to be whatever, the National Guard, whatever whatever mm-hmm. that sort of thing is not going to go over too well but you know if you're with you know you're some guy and maybe you got one other person with you or maybe you know you've got your your wife or, or your girlfriend you know your family there you know and you've got like a hunting jacket on and like a lever action deer rifle that might not be a problem no you know and it's you're, something you can use it, yeah. for multiple well you know things. but that's not going to be anywhere near as Frightening in their perception, you know. You're like, there's some crazy shit going on, and you need something that you can, well, yeah, that I mean, you can hunt with because it, otherwise you're going to be out there in the hinterlands looking for a gas and Slurpee that's got like some cream <laughs> corn left on the shelf, and then but, you're going to try. I have a funny story about cream <laughs> corn, by the way. Um, um, but but I was just thinking about this. The, the, that's just the point I wanted to make about these guys that have these, you know, the the SWAT ninja outfits, you know, 
And <clears throat> anybody that owns a anybody that owns a balaclava, I'm just I mean, if you're not if you're not doing outdoor winter sports okay <laughs> yeah or I don't, robbing a bank yeah <laughs> true i'm not sure why you need a balaclava you know yeah um, grow a beard exactly i mean the um, only perceivable i if mean you're not, the only conceivable you're, reason you need one is so somebody doesn't recognize you yeah if you're not put out, on a hat if you're not outside in really cold weather you don't really need to own a ball. No, no. Okay, that's, that's not just, really. Yeah, that's yeah. not something that you're gonna. But see you watch too much GI Joe. Like, you're not Snake Eyes. <laughs> sure, yes. sure. But uh, that's just something I was thinking about that the other day. Just that, that you know, like I said, there are, you know, there's gonna be roadblocks. There's gonna be people trying to maintain law and order. At some, they may or not, they may not be particularly successful at it. But there's gonna be people doing that, and like these sort of armed civilian gang sort of things roaming the countryside. You know, whether you you could have the best intentions, you may be out there to to bust some zombie ass. Yeah. But you're trying to do their job. Well, and, and you're and in their eyes, you're presenting a danger to yourself and to other civilians and to these, you know, military and law enforcement, because, you know, you're just some freaking yokel to them well, and well, you're out there armed to the teeth driving around, you know, well, let's say you're in a place that's sparsely populated and it's pretty much been left to lawlessness i mean the the whole like idea of the sign that rule of law ends five miles you know and anarchy and you're road out, sure yeah you're out in the stuff and you know Christ, and, that and let's say for some reason some you know guys willing to drive across this in his tanker truck yeah you know that brings up the question how do you go about getting a tanker truck you know what's the proper method of overtaking, you know, a truck full of gasoline. Well, you got nothing. You run it off and the what, road. And what, what do you need? I mean, not that there needs to be a method to go about this, but well, I, mean, I what, think I've seen the movies. You, you All you have to do is jump up on the thing. You need two people. Yeah, because you need the, guy the drive. trailer. One, one person has to You need to be on a bike where you can have one, somebody riding. You, 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 in theory, the minimum, and obviously, a crossbow. obviously, you can't do it by yourself. <laughs> yes, and a crossbow. You need a crossbow. I don't. I, I can't envision a way you could do it by yourself. No, no. So I think minimum, obviously, would be two people. You have to have one person to drive a vehicle. Yeah. All they have to do is be able to drive. You have to have another person who's fucking crazy, <laughs> hardcore. And has a grappling hook. Climb out on the hood of the car. He pulls up, follows the truck. You have to make the leap and, and, onto the ladder. And all this time, you have to have be really quiet because the guy in the truck won't think to run you off the road. <laughs> you know? Well, so I, have to be he'll be listening to country enough. music on the radio. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Well, yeah. if you're having a chase, there's going to be chase music playing. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, but you once you, I mean, that, that I guess that the main the main challenge is getting on to the truck. Yeah, I mean, a lot of them have the like the walkway on the side but, next to the tank. And they have the ladder that yeah. comes up from about the middle. Where it's like it the separates ladder on the back, the or, and there's the one that somehow have the one across the top. Yeah. So, you know? so really, if the if the truck has a ladder in the back, and you can get in the guy's blind spot, then that's going to be the best way. So, yeah, yeah, being on the hood, driving up to the rear of the truck. Because I mean, I think basically, you know, once once you get onto the truck, you've got to just make your way up to the cab. We should say it ahead of time. If anybody tries this at home. Rock on, but we're not at fault. Yeah. <laughs> so we don't cannot be held us. accountable <laughs> yeah. for your craziness. Yes, exactly. But I wish you luck. Yes. Don't All be a dumbass. And All when best. I read about you in the news, I'll go right on. Yeah, thumbs up to you. That guy's hardcore. He must have got that idea from the movies because that's yeah. where we got it from. But I mean, I mean, I guess you've got to ma- you've got to make your way to the cab, and then you you don't want to shoot the guy that's driving. Because then obviously no one would be in their truck. Well, I mean, no, I don't know much you, about Then you run trucks. the risk of the truck wrecking. Yeah. And it's but how gasoline. hard would it be just to unlatch the trailer, the tank? Well, you see, moving? I don't know how to unlatch a trailer on the truck. But, and I think you have to go about actually setting... I think there's like a jack that comes down and pushes... We should have researched this. But <laughs> I think that the, that the well, truck actually well, there has might to be, be somebody stopped out and it has to, that to knows come up. And I've never know. seen a truck come apart. On the yeah. road, where the truck like like a train I don't, unhitched. Yeah, you know? I don't, I don't. Well, I, I don't. From know. from my limited exposure to that sort of thing, I don't think you could do it. I don't, I don't. If think there's any either. truckers out there listening to this, maybe Please you can email us and let us know how we I don't, go about. I don't think so. So I'm thinking truck. you'd have you'd have to find some way to basically threaten the driver 
enough to get him to stop. Uh, you just wave a shotgun at him. Well, that's what I mean. You drive uh, yeah. up and you tap the glass with the shotgun, and they'll pull over, man. I mean, what are they going to do? Like, flip no, you that's off? No, I mean, I mean, no, <laughs> I don't. I don't think you. I don't think they. I mean, you can't just pull up next to them. I mean, I think you'd have to get. You'd have to make your way to the cab, and you'd almost like if he, you know, you're standing like there on the side by like the passengers. Well, you you got to do Raiders of the Lost Ark. You yeah. got to kick through the window and no, land I mean, in the seat just, and then no. Grab I think the if you're if you're like outside on the passenger side and you were to aim something across through the window at him, maybe you know. Yeah, I, yeah, unless they had a gun of their own. I mean, obviously, if they're driving through a nasty section of the wilderness. Uh, the the lawless area, then they're going to have some protection. They're going to yeah. have maybe even but with the question somebody is, who's got a gun. But yeah, if he's all if he's would. all by himself, how well can he drive and shoot? Well, yeah, but he'd be badass. I can tell you that much. I so mean, they, I, I, they think they are they are making more of those with automatic transmissions now. Yeah, I mean because of twelve speed, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't which even would, know the first would, thing about how would, to drive one of those. Which Two break, days ago, I which, saw a vehicle that... So, I mean, and obviously, <laughs> if you uh, if you had one with an automatic transmission... I don't know how to drive it, though. It, it, that, would, that would greatly facilitate... You know, if you have an automatic transmission, driving and shooting simultaneously is a hell of a lot easier. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you're having to stop and... So, it's tricky. I mean, it, you know, it's you'd have to... Um, I don't know. I, I think... Getting that that would be probably the last way you'd ever want to try to get fuel is from a moving truck. I yeah. Mean, if you could get on it, in theory, mm-hmm. you could you could siphon it right. from the tanker while they're moving. Yeah, because I mean, you could open the top hatch. I'm envisioning a top hatch here, so you could. Un- Some of them yeah. have the hatch on the back, the little drain mm-hmm. thing. Yeah, you know? and, and it, just like fill up cans and then drop them onto the hood, and then somebody else come and pull them theory. off. I mean. This is all like theory, of course, yeah. and, and we don't. Know and we're exactly open to suggestions. So, if anybody has think any... about that. If if you get on the truck and you start siphoning out, and you're on top of their filling cans, yeah, is the guy going to stop? Well, if he sees you, why would he stop? Well, if he sees you, maybe he'd think to put on the brakes a bit and knock you off the top of the truck, and then but think, take off. Think again. if he stops, then he's going to have. Then there's going to be a confrontation. Sure. If he keeps driving, you may just take the fuel and go. Yeah, that would be reasonable. To but if he stops, expect. then you're going to go. Then you can well, shoot him because he's not driving the vehicle. Taking the fuel on the road. What, 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 I mean, you, I, what, 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 what are you driving first? Of all? Well, if you're driving the car with the uh, the and cow got, print, you know, and and you know, if you're driving the cop car with the spikes on the front, yeah, yeah, then you're you're in a lot better shape than if, if you're, you're driving the you know like the thing that station you, wagon. If, but if you're the humongous yeah. and, and, and wh- where do they get all the nitrous? I don't know. Uh, dentist's office? Uh, but, I mean, uh, you can get a giant tank of nitrous for nothing. I know, but they they all have nitrous. All the, Everything has nitrous. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah, it makes no sense to me that you would want to have And they're like, on the nitrous. desert. Where is there a dentist office out in the den? Well, Whatever. I mean, obviously, you're, you're raiding civilization, uh, civilization to get this. They all have, yeah. like... Yeah, the, well, the, you the want humongous. to be able to get away from people with, with heavy-duty guns going, you know... You know, obviously, you're going to want to have something... You know that's going to be faster yeah, than everybody the, uh, else out there. So you'd want to have the, something. Uh, like yeah, the humong- know, but... the, the, yeah, the humongous has nitrous. I remember that. Yeah, he did. I think he was the only one that did, though. Other than then, but there's Max the, had the, the he's the, got the had the supercharger, yeah. the faux supercharger. Yeah, but, the, the, but anyway, the, but I mean, I, I but I I think getting gasoline that way from a moving vehicle would would it have to be an absolute act of desperation? Yeah, I mean, it'd be the last way you'd want. Yeah, if there were just nothing available out there, and unless I mean, if you, you know, could find some way, the refinery in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, you know, I mean, if you, if you if you if you it just you, happens to be over the one spot where they can find petroleum. I mean, sure, if you sure. um, if you and knew, then refine it. Yes, I mean, if you, how if convenient. You, if you knew, if you knew of a truck like that, I guess you'd be much better off maybe with like a roadblock or something, trying mm-hmm. to find some way to stop them. You know, but but trying to take a moving vehicle like that. Just, there's so many problems. I mean, we as a group have driven to several places with refineries, and that's another thing. I mean, say that we were capable of actually getting to a unmanned refinery. I would have I, they no got, idea they where got, to go to find the gasoline. They got, they got yeah. an awful lot of pipes going on in a refinery, yeah. and I mean, it looks pretty awesome. And I don't really think I know what that 
how to go about like even turning what valve to get what. I'm I'm pretty sure they're labeled, but there's a well maybe somebody a who lot of them that have we to might have somebody anymore. who might be li- eventually listening to this and let us know. Well, yeah, I mean somebody out there maybe works at a refinery. I mean we we are yeah, going to uh, compile just... enough information to be able to pull this off one day. I guess. I, I, I mean, I, well, I'm guessing there's. Well, we need to make friends with no, the refinery I'm, I'm people. Is what it is. I mean, that's that's the classic method. You need to you the, need to give um, them something. They you know. They, I'm not Republican though. Oh, oh. Um, that's a chomp. I'm but on I, that. I don't know anybody in the refinery business. I'm the, not uh, Democrat either, so I don't know but anybody. But the people that work at refineries are definitely not Republican, I would think, uh, because that's a rough job, and you don't see a whole lot of guys that are. Probably well, it's. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing. I'm guessing in a refinery, types. there's there's got to be a. Uh, uh, storage. There's probably a... Oh, know, certainly. There's some, there's I mean, some, absolutely. Got to be some big honking storage tanks. Yeah, so you'd obviously be able to use those. But I don't exactly... And I guess I'm guessing that's what they fill up the tankers from. Yeah. So yeah, I, they I don't, don't drain them. Unless right they're underground. The well, I mean, refineries I, 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 make I, I, more I, I, than yeah. just gasoline also. They make kerosene and every other petroleum product from crude oil. So, I mean, you could walk away, you know, with a tanker full of Vaseline, and if you're not careful, <laughs> you know, you'd be like, wow, I'm never going to chafe again, but this ain't going to do me any good. Well, I would... I would Damn it, <laughs> the wrong damn tanker. Oh, I wouldn't say it's not going to do you any good. Well, but, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I'm, I'm, I mean, I guess, I I don't know, I mean, a refinery would, would be, Obviously, that's a very attractive target to a lot of people, so that that might be something very dangerous to get so involved. So, so the the trick would be if you did find a refinery to make friends. So you need to have some gifts on hand that you can you know, offer. <laughs> yeah, I mean, people because they're at the there, refinery, I mean. and we all know from experience and from history. <laughs> from it, experience? Well, from history, anyways. From from, from other from, people's from, experience. From my exposure to popular media. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that uh, fortifications don't hold. Eventually, somebody's going to be able to take well, them out. And, and living when in a your refinery... Gate, when your gate is a bus with <laughs> plating on the side... Yeah, but it wouldn't take but one stray bullet in a refinery. They probably have signs all over the place. No smoking or shooting guns. Yes. You know, because <laughs> uh, a stray bullet hits one of those pipes full of some kind of flammable liquid, the whole place goes up. And, I mean, they got to be scared to death of somebody just, like, shooting off something. So, armor plating on a building such as a refinery, if you want to even call it a building, mess up pipes is what it looks like. I mean, but it wouldn't take much to put that thing asunder if you decided to just go shoot it up one day. Yeah, you either give me some gasoline or I just start shooting wildly in the air, you know, and they'll probably give you whatever. Yeah, certainly. I'm. It, and I don't, yeah, I don't know that you'd want to try to you know, invade or take over a refinery. <laughs> yeah, and I, and you I have don't, a, a great I, voice for loudspeakers. And know. I don't, uh, I don't, and I don't think it'd be the kind of place Just that. Walk away. I don't think it's the kind of place that you'd. Uh, it's too much pain. <laughs> uh, don't forget that cheesy '70s hockey match, the oh, goalie oh, match, sure, too. Sure. the metal one, oh, <laughs> the humongous, the Lord you think humongous. They rated like a sporting goods um, store. Oh, that looks great. <laughs> but I, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think that a refinery. Is a really practical place to try to like stay. Yeah, you know, I wouldn't want to live real close to one. No. So. So I, you know, I guess the big question is, where would you get, where would you get most of your gasoline? Would it be mostly like raiding, you know? Out of I guess the, you'd have to live pretty close to like the fringes of civilization in order to make entries into it to get what you need and then, and then haul ass out of there. I think the easiest thing to, to do, up. I mean, unless you know how to get gasoline from a closed or non-functioning gas pump, is just to siphon it from other yeah. vehicles. Yeah, but then you run the risk of getting shot by the guys that are carrying them out as much That's why you got more than one. you have. So. And, oh, I doubt that. I mean, well, well, there's... There's plenty of SUVs out there with 25-gallon tanks. I used to hang around with a guy in high school that lost there his aren't gas be cap, pre- and he stuffed a sock in it. And, like, he had that sock hanging out the end of his, like, gas The world's biggest Molotov and then, cocktail. And then, some, and then the sock <laughs> fell out one day, and what do you go? He stuffed newspaper in there. And I was like, dude, that's a wick. <laughs> yeah, like you said, you're basically driving a Molotov cocktail around. And, I mean, if you, if you lock your car... Right 
and you armor plated everything pretty well. I mean, say you you went to the trouble of actually making sure your windows were impervious to breaking in, and you made the like the slit in the front window and steel plating over it to where you could see out of it, and you turned your car into a tank. Well, and your car now weighs 8,000 pounds. Well, I mean, well, you, you get lighter gets, weight materials, and gets, and but gets, you well, could was get trying, into it with a crowbar no matter what. I mean, the point that I was trying to make is the, the, all the soccer moms on the face of the yeah. planet aren't going to drop dead. Yeah. And they're going to have their Land Rovers or whatever they're driving that's got, yeah. you know, 20 and 30 gallon tanks full of gas, and they're not going to protect that stuff. So okay. at the first, that just good. siphon that, that shit off. That sounds that's, good. That's, so yeah, that, I, we're I, stealing I gas from soccer moms because yeah. what are they going to do? I mean, I, I mean, I, they I, might yeah, like. I, I think I they think, could probably conceivably offer you sex, but unless you're into the milf thing, you're probably um, not going to worry hey, about hey, it. Yeah, yeah. But then again, you could just do it and still take their gas. But I, th- I think, yeah, I, I agree. True, I, th- I think the, the place that you're, you're that's gonna, where you'd start. You're, you're, I, I think yeah, you're going to be. Start. I think you're going to be getting most of it from other vehicles. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> because like the the tanker truck thing is is wildly impractical. Y- yes, absolutely. The refinery thing, when are you and then see one. Anyways? And then if you if you you think like if there's a if there is a gas station, and say it's abandoned or you know partially damaged in some way, but you know there's a pump intact, and you think there may be some fuel down there. You know, if all those mechanisms aren't working, it's going to be tricky to extract the gas from right. the underground Yeah, because most pumps are electric yeah. anyways and they're not the hand crank type. So yeah, you're going so to need to have a big site. So there may be out. a gas station and it may have gasoline in the, you know, the underground Yeah, tanks. yeah. You're going to be able to... That's going to be hard to get. You're going to have to get, like, the cap off and then basically get a big hose down in so there the, and then siphon it off into yeah. a reservoir of yeah. some sort. So I mean, there's plenty of car. I mean, there's yeah, plenty of certainly the the most practical way would be because siphoning it from a car is phenomenally easy. I mean that that's that's no big deal at all. Yeah. and that's that would seem to be the place that you're. And if you have an excess of gasoline, say that you're very good at getting your gasoline, that that also gives you another ability for weaponry because then you can make Molotov cocktails. Right. Well, well it, it also gives you something to barter with. Yeah, too. I was gonna say yeah, you, you yeah, can yeah, trade you it for gas. all the stuff. You know, you can you can buy women and goats with it. <laughs> yes, goat. I can use all this excess <laughs> gasoline to buy women and goats. That's my dream, goats. Goats. Mine and women. mine involves women. In, more women than goats. <laughs> well, of course. Well, I don't know. I mean, it's worth more goat or a woman. what are you going to do with a goat? You can make you can shear them. Oh, the little clothing. the little bitty ones are kind of cute. You can they're, make your great. <laughs> they're mean and they stink. You could have Sweater. all the cheese that you want. Right there. All kinds of. Greek salad. Yeah, you know, that's another question. I mean, it, it, where is your food going to come from, though? I mean, uh, it, yes, I mean, livestock is going to be wiggly. absolutely important because you're going to need to have a fresh supply of food. And obviously the canned know, food man. is only going to last so long. The There's grocery stores of, are going to get raided. I mean, all you have to do is have a storm, and all of a sudden all the bread and milk is gone out of every grocery store. The thing, so. I mean, man, most people have no concept of... You know, animal husbandry, livestock. No, no. And the, the, all that stuff's high maintenance. They've got to be fed. They've got to be taken care of, you know. I mean. And I all know. the farms are mechanized nowadays. So if they lose the ability to, to run the robots, tractors, then. No robots taking care of my cows. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're drawing the milk from them, man. You ever milked a cow? I've never milked a cow. No, it but looks I, hard. But my point is, like, like you know, there's. I don't know. I mean, I guess if if you, and I think most of the time, I don't know. If you're living nomadically, you're going to be scrounging for whatever. But. Yeah, but we're just saying. I mean, obviously, you're not producing. You're not making an excess yeah. of supplies and material for your living. You're you're basically living a nomadic experience <clears throat> in the carved out Mad Max scenario. So you're not like looking to start a farm or looking to have a community. It, you're you're just obviously just stealing food. Well, you know, friends, so that, we're, that, well, we're no, catering that, no. more to that. That yeah, because that sort of thing is highly likely. There are people you know who are going to band together and yeah. try to maintain. Probably more likely than yeah. Not. You know, yeah, that's absolutely. What mo- most, most sadly, most that's what most people that. are going to do. All the boring <laughs> yeah. people. Sure. They're gonna you know, but no, I mean that's just natural. They're you know they're gonna maintain social bonds and and they're gonna be you know in little groups and they'll all help each other out. That's what most people will do in any situation. You know, it's the you know, the loners, the antisocial, whatever, fringe types, you know, that are yeah. going to be the ones 
going right on, you know. I don't have to go to work. I can just drive around in my muscle car all day, and I can shoot people, and there's no cops. You know, it's they're the Got ones my that... my dog, my grappling hook, and my shotgun. You know, and those are the... the and, and you're eating the dog's food. Um, yeah. That's the thing yeah, that really... you're sucks. sharing, because Dinky, he's sharing his food. Uh, Dinky D with meat and veggies. <laughs> that's right. God, I've seen it too many times. But, oh, my goodness. Um, you know, but I mean, most people are, are going to be, you know, forming... You know, whatever you want to call them, you know, these sort of extended families, grouping things, yeah, you know. Yeah. The life of the loner um, definitely looks like a promising thing for the future if this sort of goes down, but only in that you'd be only able to do the things so that long. you wanted to do for the, I mean, I've, I've told girls this so many times. It's like the girls want to, they want to think that the fantasy of all males is that, you know, we have tons of women and they do whatever we want. Well, that is, of course, <clears> a, a nice thing. But they, they just don't get it that the that the ultimate male fantasy is that there ain't no women. It's just you, your dog, <laughs> your muscle car, and your shotgun out in the <laughs> desert killing people for gas. I mean, it, honestly, that's it. And you know, that's a really good point to wrap up on too. I think so. Yeah, <laughs> that that ladies out there, the ultimate dream. Oh, of we male love you. Is oh yeah, we love you. But. I mean, we'll trade gas for you for sure, but, you know. Our, for women or goats. Yes, for women or goats, we'll trade fuel. The and dog in the car don't nag. Yep, yep. Yeah, they do whatever we want. Well, for, I'm not going to touch that. So. Uh, oh, yeah, I walked into that one, didn't I? Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, for, uh, for myself and... Uh, and for me. <laughs> And you. And, and you. And, and, and we. Hey, okay, and me, too. me too. Me <laughs> too. For all of us here at Destruct Mundo podcast, uh, we wish you uh, a good day. And hopefully and send us that, suggestions. Yes, send us suggestions. Because we're not experts. If if you have any if ideas you want bitch, on things. Send an email that, and we'll criticize we, it on if, our next if show. You, if you can send us something that we can cover or if you have a suggestion on something that we should have covered. Or I'll at least check it for grammar and spelling. Yes, yes. Or we'll at least <laughs> and uh, send it back to you. flame Correct. you for, for, <laughs> for being such a horrid speller. Uh, then uh, send it to us uh, at our email at destructamundo at gmail.com. And tonight's broadcast, Ted has alerted me to the fact that tonight's broadcast was brought to you by Bass Beer, because that's it's, what the liquor store had. <laughs> Otherwise, we and it's been, good. Or we what a got great that, ad, Bass. Bass. It's what they had. <laughs> had. Exactly. Oh, that'd be the best billboard ever. Bass. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's what they had. <laughs> and a big thumbs up. <laughs> yeah, it didn't low in calories, but it's all they had. Sorry. So it is good though. It Thank doesn't taste bass. cold enough for me. No, it's not the coldest tasting beer on earth. So, but it's got a lot of flavor. <laughs> That's a subject for the next show. <laughs> so, from I can't even talk. <laughs> from the Destructo Mundo podcast, this is James and, and Ted and Derek, and we're saying good evening. <laughs> and so began the journey north to safety, to our place in the sun. Among us, we found a new leader. The man who came from the sky, the gyro captain. And just as Papagallo had planned, we traveled far beyond the reach of men on machines. The juice, the precious juice, was hidden in the vehicles. As for me, I grew to manhood. In the fullness of time, I became the leader, the chief of the great northern tribe. And a road warrior. That was the last we ever saw of him. He lives now only in my memories. <laughs>